In today's video, we'll be attempting to come up with a front-end system design for this really cool table component. This actually is a common front-end system design question that you can see over the internet. And this is the very first time I'm trying to solve this problem, so you'll be able to see my thought process and the problems that I run into. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I think this is going to be a problem that will focus more on the UI and component architecture, so hopefully this won't be too difficult. We will also talk about the requirements, APIs, dive deeper into the component architecture and front-end state and store. We will talk about the performance considerations, internationalization, accessibility, and cross-device support. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And really quick, I want to mention that in order to save some time for this video, I actually did some setup steps. So I just had some components already drawn. Over here, I have prepared a list of requirements. As you can see in the mockup, the table has a header component and a filtering component. The table has already been given the columns, but generally speaking, to make the table component more usable, we should expose the column definitions to the component consumer, which means that as someone who is using the table component, I should be able to configure the column definitions or the column schemas, including the name of the column, the width of the column, the order of the columns, sortability and editability of the columns. The value of each column could be either a component or a primitive type value. In this case, when I talk about a component, I'm talking more specifically about a React component because that is something I'm more familiar with. But this component could also be, you know, an Angular component or a view component. And the page size should be configurable. You can specify five items on each page or 20 items on each page. The table could also have a pagination component. So last but not least, you should be able to do multi-select or single select on table rows. I think these are all the requirements for our table component. And I think I've also mentioned some of the non-functional requirements already, uh, including the performance, accessibility, internationalization, and cross-browser, cross-device support. So I've listed them over here. Next, I would like to quickly go through the API and data flow before we go into component architecture and UI state. I think the component architecture is definitely the more exciting and interesting piece of this front-end system design. So I would just quickly go through the API and data flow. Uh, here, we only need one API to list all the products. We should use uh, the get HTTP method, and it's uh, your personal choice whether you want to use GraphQL or RESTful API, but in my case, I am going to use a RESTful API, and it's going to have a product endpoint. You can specify the size of the page and how many items to skip and the filter value and the sorting order. The response is going to be a list of products. Each product would have the attributes based on uh, the columns of this table. There is something I want to talk about, which is the client-side filtering versus server-side filtering. The key factor is the length of the items. If you are able to load all the items in its entirety in one API call, then I think it's worth it doing the filtering on the client side. Otherwise, I would suggest doing the filtering on the server side and offload the pagination, sorting, and filtering to the server. Next, I'd like to talk about the component architecture. What props this table component would accept and what state to have when we are using this table component. And I'm also going to talk about how to organize this table component. From the mockup, we have seen that the table has a header, a footer, and it might also has pagination and filtering. So, and the main body, which is the table, is consisted of the column header and rows. 
So that is exactly how I am going to break down this table component. As you can see over here, it has a header component, a footer component, the header has a filtering component, the footer has a pagination component, and the main body is the table. The table can have a header and the rows, which represents rows of data. This table can have different states depend on the data fetching status. If the data is being loaded, then the table would show a loading state. If the response from the API is empty, then we show an empty state for the table. If there is no matching for the filtering, then we show a not match state for the table. And if you select one or more rows, the rows component will show them in selected state either multi-select or single select. I think there are two required properties to pass into the table component, the columns property and the rows property. The columns define the definitions of each column. Like I mentioned earlier, it should define the ID, the name, sortability, and width of the column. The value here is a function that would map the cell to the component that we want to display. For example, the status column above takes in the status and return a component that shows the status with the visual indicator. The header, footer, filtering, pagination properties can all be optional and it would take a JSX element. For pagination component, we can further define the required properties. I think the required properties for the pagination component are the current page index and the total page count. There are some other optional properties, including disabled, which could probably gray out the pagination component when specified as true. The open-ended property indicates whether we should show the dots. There are multiple event handlers we could specify as well. For example, when user clicks on different pages, we can specify the on change event handler. When user clicks on previous or next page, the on previous page click or the on next page clicked event handler will be executed if provided. For the on change event handler, it would accept a pagination change event as input. The pagination change event interface will look something like this. It includes a detail object which contains the current page index. Similarly, the table component could accept different event handlers. For example, when the width of the column changes, the on width change event handler that you specified will be triggered. You know, you'll have access to the array of column widths inside the event handler. When you're selecting different rows, the on selection change event handler would be triggered and you'll have access to an array of selected rows inside the event handler. When the user sorts the items in different order, the on sorting change event handler would be triggered and you'll have access to the columns and the sorting order. Last but not least, when the filter query changes, for example, when the user is typing something different, the on filtering change event handler will be triggered and you should have access to the updated filter query inside the event handler. I think we can also look at what other properties the table component could accept. As we talked about earlier, for the main table body, we could optionally define what the table will look like and what message to display when the table is empty, when there's not a match to user's query and when the data is loading. We can pass in an array of selected rows into the table component and the selection type property would help define whether to show a radio button or a checkbox next to the selected row. The visible columns define what columns to show and what columns to hide. These two properties, descending, sorting enabled, are related to whether the items are displayed in a sorting order and whether the sorting is enabled for this table. The class name property works similarly to the ID property. They help you to work with CSS selectors more easily. And the other important property would be the key by property.
we will talk more about it in the performance section but this is to improve the performance when we have a list of items and it also helps to avoid unnecessary re-render. I think these are pretty much everything that the table component should accept as props. There are a couple of properties inside the column schema that I did not mention. For example, the main width and max width help you make the table column more responsive. The sorting comparator property, you can use it if you want to have a more custom sorting behavior. And here is an updated diagram that shows you what properties will be taken by each component. Underneath this diagram, I've defined some states that the user may want to define when consuming this table component. I'll just use React functional component as an example here, since that's pretty much suggested inside the community. You know, we would have designated states for data fetching logic, for filtering and pagination, and the column definitions. One improvement that I can think of is to define all of them inside one big object and just create one hook that stems from that object and we can call it a collection hook. The purpose of that is to avoid calling set method multiple times because that's going to trigger a re-render of the component. So I talked a little bit about performance by using the key by property earlier. This is because in React, the keys really help React to identify which items are added have changed or are removed and it has to do with the reconciliation algorithm inside of react i will attach some links in the description below to the details of the reconciliation algorithm but it is more of an implementation detail but i think overall there are two guidelines the first guideline is that the reconciliation algorithm will not try to match the subtrees of different component types. And the second one is that the keys that should be stable and predictable and unique. That's why we want to suggest our customers to use key by property to define the name of the column whose value is unique. The other performance improvement we can make is to use event delegation. Instead of create event handlers for each item, we can instead just create the event handler on its parent, the table component. This is really helpful because it utilizes the event capturing and bubbling mechanism, and we only need to create the event handler once on the table component without having to create it 50 times on each row. I mentioned internationalization in the beginning. What I was thinking is we could have a centralized file that holds all the translations. The first level key is the language. The For example, we have English, Spanish, French, and simplified Chinese. And then the second or third layer key would be the same across different languages. The value would be the translation. And if the table is going to be used for a language that reads from right to left, then we should also consider having different scenarios for that. I also mentioned that we may want to have mobile support because the horizontal scrolling is not usually a good experience on mobile. We probably want a slightly different design. You know, we can have different options in this case. We can leave the specific designs to consumer or we can be more opinionated about what the design would be. I would suggest that we choose a more opt-in and hybrid approach. We can have multiple lines instead of single line for one row. We can use an accordion to show less important data and we can give a preference setting to allow customer to hide certain columns and we may also have an option to have a sticky column or sticky columns to the left or right side of the table. In the end, here are some of my thoughts on accessibility.
I think we should use semantic table markup to present the tabular data for the main table body component. And we should define the scope attribute to associate header cells and data cells in the data tables. We should pass in the area label for some of the components, for example, the selection component to align with the language that we're using. And I think we're done here. And this is the overall design that I come up with for this front end system design question, design a data table. Let me know if you have any suggestions or feedback on this design. And I very much look forward to your feedback. If you find this video useful, please give me a like and subscribe. I'll be making more videos like this for my own practice and to give back to the front end community.